Here we've done it. Here we We're are. getting into multimedia. Not only a newspaper, a TV show. And now, for the first time in history, a podcast. Woo! This is my commitment to you, audience. From now on, every Tuesday, there will be a new podcast. Whoop, whoop. And if I fail that, I'll make a $100 donation to the Auckland City Mission. I've got my fingers crossed. How long are you going to do these podcasts for? Um, until further notice. Until you have to pay $100. <laughs> until I have to pay $100. So you've it's got a week. A, quite a fancy <laughs> kit we got here. Walk me through this kit, Deb. The, the crazy thing about the SM58s is you'll watch a video or you'll see a live performance of your favorite singer, like one of the best singers mm. ever in the world, and there they are on stage singing, mm. and they're using SM58s, mm. which anybody can get for... Industry standard. $200, yeah. I think they were more than that. Well, 200 US, you know, maybe. Mm. Some, not much. Surplus Tronics um, actually sell a really good clone of the SM58, which is, you know, if you're on a budget, you can get that for, you know, quite, quite cheap. Um, I bought one, and it's it's been, like, a core member of my kit for a long time. So anyway, that's not the reason why people have tuned in today to find out what toys... We're using, what What are we talking about? I guess what we're talking about is new beginnings, I think. is like, mm-hmm. you know, lately I've been filming the third season of the Cairo Chronicles and we're very much focused on housing. And, you know, for a long time we thought, you know, just get people into housing, that's the answer. Actually, it's just the beginning for a place to grow. Mm. And I think with the new year coming up, it's just probably a good time to think about new beginnings, you know, like what's that great semi-sonic song, every new beginning starts with some other beginnings end. Yeah, well, this is Cairo Chronicles' first podcast from the office of the Cairo Chronicles on K Road, yep. as you might have guessed. <laughs> yeah, you're spotted, it's in the Lim Chor food court, it's right by the... Um, the supermarket. supermarket entrance, we've got a Lethal Enforcer game out the front. and um, Yeah, I can see you've got a lot of stuff in here. You've got a lot of your old issues, photocopy machines. Yeah. Reso machine, a little fridge. It's just a handy little spot to call home mm. away from home. And you've got a TV advertising your um, new season coming up. Well, no, that's TV actually season. looping the um, season one and season two. Yeah, right. So if you haven't seen them, you can call in here and I can copy the co- issues over onto a flash drive for you, no problem. It's really cool that we're doing season stuff for back on board, NZ on air back on board. Yeah, what's happening in season three? Season three is very much about housing and um, community building. And um, cool. and you know we're do- we're doing a story about a young guy Eric that's just moved into the Day Street um, property that Auckland City Mission have just taken over. Lovely uh-huh. flats. It's the first time in his life. Is it um, an apartment? It's a little studio apartment. It's lovely. It's got yep. a you know little kitchen, fridge, everything, everything that you could possibly want. Um, and then, of course, Auckland City Missions got their wonderful new home ground facility we're covering. We've got a rooftop garden and they've got mm. activities and a medical centre. It's got a detox centre. It's right. got permanent housing. I've been up there already. And once again, lovely little flats that anybody should be proud mm. to own. Yeah, well, you know, in these, this day and age... You should be proud to own anything at all, yeah. You know, everyone's flatting together yeah. tightly. Since COVID, you know, we, we really... The, the, the issue of poverty and homelessness has really quite changed since we filmed the first season of the K Road Chronicles. It was very much then about homeless people and people living on the streets. Mm. And COVID saw a huge move, a huge, huge shift in priorities, and mm. people got housed. Mm. And we don't have the same. But they got housed because they were scared of COVID, not because they were scared of these people like dying from. Yeah, um, that's that's true. But you know, it's um, 
it's also, it might not have been the way we would have liked to have gone about it, but we did it. We yeah, got yeah. people into housing. And I think the people you see um, on the street now have serious behavioural issues, serious mental health mm. issues, um, and they're the they're the people that are really just we struggle to we can get them into housing, mm. but they can't sustain housing. They need the most help. They need the most help, and um, you know there's not a lot of money out there for mental health. You know, the average psychiatrist or, or professional therapist is 150 to 180 dollars an hour. Yeah, you know what the crazy thing is. I know people personally who have applied to do the counsellor's, you know, psychiatrist program at the university and they get denied every year because they've only got space for, you know, like 50 people or something. Yeah. Meanwhile, you know. Meanwhile, we're churning out graduates in industries that don't even right. exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why we, don't you study Egyptology? <laughs> It's like, you know, we we've don't have enough teachers. We don't have enough... We can't pay our firefighters. We can't pay our nurses, probably. And we're hemorrhaging good professional people every day overseas. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a shit situation. And there just seems to be a lack of investment in basic infrastructure. The police force is, you know, in a state of disarray. Is it? Yeah, the, pe- the, the just the people that are that are um, joining the police force are totally unfit for purpose. Mm. Um, they're bullies and you know do-gooders, and they bring to the job their own um, mm. their own prejudices Agendas, yeah. and their own issues. And you know, it's you know when when you've actually been around police and heard them. Yeah, speak, how long is the training to be a police? It's Twelve officer? weeks. Is it? Whoa. You know what I mean? That's why we've got such a huge gang problem is because gangs have far more commitment to their patch. <laughs> it right. takes years to get a gang patch. To be a prospect. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you can you can be a cop within three months. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is and the whole world is seems to... I don't, I don't hey, know. The, well, the good thing is that you're drawing attention to these kind of issues in the most appealing way for people these days, which... I know you've got your publication, but you've got now you've got this video that can go on people's phones. You know, people love that shit. They <laughs> do, but you know, I mean, I I really you just spoke to me before about your kids in your classes and that not reading, and the problem Scream. is if you don't read, you deny yourself the opportunity to source your own information. You're just um, limited to what's broadcast to you and what we are told to think. Mm. And as a government... But what's the difference, though, between your publication and your TV show? Is it, are you still not getting the same information? The difference is reading is an active two-way right. two communication. Yeah, viewing is more passive. Viewing is passive. You don't absorb the information the same way. Sometimes, though, I think it makes you active because you feel so engaged with it it's like turning you on you know and your your mind's alive when you watch something really good you you can't say that's fully passive if you're getting so emotional in reaction to it or that's passive you're passive. reacting you're not contributing to the process you're not helping to create that process yeah i guess when you're reading you actually have to participate in the process you know you interpret the words you you add the accents to Yeah, it. you make the voice run in your head. You and create the voice, you know? It's <laughs> like when you've read a book and you've developed this vision of a character and then you see the movie of it, it's like, that looks nothing like the person I imagined. Right, yeah. Now, reading is very powerful and if we wind up in a world where people don't read, it becomes very di- easy to manipulate people. You know, I mean, the way we absorb communication has dramatically changed in the last, even the last two or three years. Feels like it. You know, I mean, I often wonder what my younger self would make of this world. Hmm. Like this podcasting now, because, you know, some people prefer audiobooks and such. 
So is it is a podcast? Is that passive? If you're just listening to it, it is passive. Reading is an active process. You you know, in everything else is passive. Right, everything. Everything I can think of, unless you're taking notes, or you're mm. or you're talking to the TV, which you know I do quite often. <laughs> anyway, we're getting off topic. Topic, but what we um. What we can agree on, new beginners. What yeah. we can agree on is that it's important to have these dialogues. It's important to have these options. Yeah, here we are doing here the podcast <laughs> so for the, anybody. So it's exciting. I'm excited about 2023 because, you know, I mean, I've come a long way with the Chronicle thanks to help from people like yourself, thanks to sponsorship. That can t- you know, we've lost some sponsors. Mm. We've had new sponsors come on. We've you know we've got market penetration on the Instagram and the Facebook and now cool. people are saying why aren't you on TikTok and it's like <laughs> you know you've I think you've got to kind of commit to what you do well yeah well TikTok seems like more entertainment this is more news news views and reviews news views and reviews. Yeah. yeah, what what is the K Road Chronicle? It's document it's chronicling the K Road, so it does yeah, what it's it, a chronicle. You know. It's not trying to be terribly yeah. hard hitting or sensational or it's um you know, I, I say it doesn't have to include only articles relating to K Road. It just has to be significant to our K Road audience and who is our K Road audience? It's very bohemian. It's it's yeah. it's Maori. It's Pacifica. It's Pakia. It's Asian. It's Arabic. It's Chinese. It's um, definitely the it's, most colourful street in Auckland. It's the wealthy. It's the poor. It's the in between. It's the entrepreneurs. It's the artists. Yeah. It's you Everybody. know it's such a colourful and diverse street where um, individuality is is not you know only encouraged it's celebrated and you know I, I think I think we can create a virus a virus of kindness hmm. and all that takes is one small kind deed at a time one hmm. small act of kindness can change the world because it creates a chain effect hmm. you know if, I, if you do a random act of kindness and that person does a random act of kindness and yeah eventually we create a virus of kindness <laughs> virus, that yeah. spreads you know suddenly the Queen- corona kindness yeah <laughs> corona suddenly kindness. people in queen street are like what the fuck's going on with those people in k road they're all happy and smiley and hmm. then they start getting happy and smiley and then it spreads throughout auckland and then it spreads to hamilton and hamilton goes Man, those Auckland people fellows are so happy. I definitely have been down K, K Road at some points and thought everybody on the street does seem really happy. <laughs> it's such a diverse, entertaining, you know, sixth coolest street in the world. According to Six. No, Time Out magazine. I think when you go to a new country, you've always got to find the K Road of that place. Every big city's got one, yeah. got that street, but... They don't always advertise it. But you know it when you find it. <laughs> oh, that's where Lonely Planet's quite good. Man, I read Lonely Planet right. when I left Thailand instead of beforehand. It would have saved me a lot of time and trouble. Right, right. You're like, oh yeah, I went to Carl Sun Road. <laughs> so what's coming up in the K Road uh, Chronicle publication? I love reading that. Well, in the current issue, which just came out... Um, we got Dan the Barber on the cover. We got the never ending adventures of a Ranga Man. We got a <laughs> review on Gloria's Cafe. Um, what else have we got? We've got, um, you know, the normal crossword and the adult join the dots jokes. <laughs> where to get a Kai from. Oh, speaking of where to get a Kai from, Christmas Day, if you're a bit hard up or you're um, lonely or. You want to get a good Christmas meal, 
you can go to Sataya, the um, Indian restaurant on Great North Road, and they'll be offering free meals. So, cool. So just a wee plug there for Satya. Satya, that's I might so be cool, saying yeah. that wrong, but S-A-T-Y-A. It was in the Herald this morning, so if you search the Herald, mm. the information will be in there. Great. And um, I'll try to put some information on the... Uh, I love Merge Cafe, too, on K Road. They Merge always Cafe, have, um, always cheap good meals. For, always good for a... And free on the weekends. Well, wow. yeah. It's mm. Haven on the weekends, which is run by... Oh, okay. run by somebody else but um, if you like pumpkin soup that's the place to go but if you like what's any- co- well like I've read that issue what's what's coming up in the future issues what have you got anything up your sleeve that you want to like well play? it's been really interesting with the Cairo Chronicles filming of the new season and I've come to realize that the Chronicle actually plays a more important role in um, mm. l- letting the community know what's happening and what's going on than than I realised and we're currently in discussions with the um, council about possible additional funding right um, for the publication for the publication to be sustainable because each issue costs give or take $500 to produce and that's just an income paper. That's not paying me for mm. any of my time or um, or anything. So we get a little bit of sponsorship from the local community, but but you honestly, use like don't you use recycled paper and you, um, the ink is vegetable oil or something like we that. We print mostly on a what's called a reso machine, which is um, kind of a cross between a photocopier. Sorry about the background noise. It <laughs> is. It is busy time at the food court. Um, but yeah, we, we use a reso machine which uses um, vegetable-based ink. And um, the, the people say, oh, you know, it's paper. It's, you know, but paper is actually very environmentally friendly. It can be recycled up to six or seven times before the fibres break down too small. Mm. And then it There's gen- also the um, digital footprint just from using the internet you know the digital footprint is huge it's the equivalent to a fleet of boeing 747s um Mm. people think email is But what did you say before there's more impact with the paper publication than the tv series what was what were you saying there is there's more impact with paper with a paper-based paper than than the i mean it's because it's kind of yeah everyone says why not do a website? You know, why why put, produce oh, a paper? Right. And it's because people engage with the paper. They read it on the bus. There's right, nothing it's the active to, thing. Yeah, you're talking if, about. If I walk in to the NZPC or you know Saloon Bar or hmm. Lifewise, everyone wants a copy of the paper. Yeah, I think with your one, I'm gonna just grab one here. Like your one, it seems to be more like a fun the kind of thing that i don't know this is nostalgic too like that you can only get from paper yeah, news and, and jokes and uh weird stuff look the thing is it's meant to be a little bit underground it's meant to be a little bit difficult to get a hold of it like be- um it's like a zine right well i suppose to me zines are just kind of self-indulgent often yeah um, they can be anything really though yeah i guess you know, by definition, it's a zine, but it, I think, you know, my, my production It's standards. also more than a zine. It's also like a newspaper or a magazine. Well, it's based on good fundamental journalistic principles. Right. You know, yeah, it's yeah. not advertorial, dressed up as a story like, you know, Verve and Ponsonby News. And so it's kind of a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's all... Well, it's trying to be relevant. <laughs> it's trying to be relevant and meaningful to the target audience. Mm. And who's the target audience? It's, yeah, it's, you're trying to keep it real and have yeah. an authentic feel to it, which I think comes through. Well, tell those stories that don't get told in mainstream media. You know what mm. I mean? When we first did the first season of the Cairo Chronicles, we were considered very niche and very you know specialised, and we got funding through the um, minority funding group, mm. but now we're mainstream. Oh, right, because you've 
gained some success from that. Gained some success. I mean, who would have thought a TV show presented by a transgendered person about homelessness Mm. would have been so popular? Right. <laughs> we even we're kind so of so popular that you stop being a minority. That's hilarious. So popular we stop being a minority. <laughs> it's um, it's yeah. I think it's you're a, a sellout, sex. Um, well, yeah. You know, some people have told me I'm a sellout. And it's like <laughs> if you knew how little I make out of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To sell out, you actually have to make money, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of money. You got to sell. Yeah. So I do have a three-year five-year plan so in that time i want to make sure that the chronicle is a sustainable model for micro journalism that would support maybe one or two journalists an office person photographer it's not about making a million dollars it's about making a difference and if we can if we can reach people we can communicate with them you know, our audience is growing all the time. Mm. And um, when I say our, I mean the K-Rate Chronicle because... Have you seen your demographics? Yeah, and it's like right across the board. It's from cool. a lot of teenagers love the Chronicle right, mm-hmm. up, until, right up until elderly people. It's, yeah. um, it's really... What do your parents think of it? <laughs> they... They just think it's a nice little hobby for yeah. me. <laughs> they tend to treat me as the village idiot, to be honest. It's um, They don't even understand what I do or why I do it. And well, now that you're in Auckland, they probably think you're the city idiot. Mm. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it's one thing to be the village idiot, but to be the idiot of a whole city. Oh, look, it's a lot of competition. You know, I mean, I think... You know, the Chronicle's got a... It's very much my style. It's, there's a very much tongue-in-cheek and... It's not... It's uplifting. It's, it's um, you know, it's fun to read. It feels very self-indulgent at times. You're like, ah, oh, I fucking love this dad joke. I'm going to put this in here. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, it's like my force paper. dad jokes on the world. <laughs> yeah. I remember when uh, the first couple of issues I did and, like, the first couple of issues... Well, only a couple of sheets of paper with you know they were very small right and um had a lot of people go oh that's a gay publication i was like totally <laughs> totally we use homosexual paper right and lesbian ink whoa <laughs> yeah <laughs> i try to make it as appealing to as broad a spectrum of audience as possible right it's multitudes well, it is multitudes, but, you know, the, the danger in trying to be everything to everyone is you be- wind up becoming nothing to anyone. You become Yeah. Yeah. Uh, isn't that awful? It's, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to... We're not even... We're going to cut that out because we're not even going to give them the decency of, of naming... Oh, you want me to bleep that? <laughs> Just bleep that. The the um, C N word. I'm trying to, I'm trying to create something that people actually enjoy reading. No, no, no you're not trying to. You are creating. Thanks. Yeah, you are creating. Well, you carry know, on with your sentence. A lot of a lot of times, language like that can be huge in, impact on you. If you if you think I am rather than I want to. Yeah. You um you know it changes your your stream of thinking. Yeah, I got told that at audio engineering school because I guess they knew that none of us were going to get jobs as audio engineers. <laughs> when people ask you what you do, you know, we're like 19 or 20, tell them you're an audio engineer because <laughs> that's what we're doing for a whole year, studying that shit. So live it, be it. Yeah. Well, that's right. I mean, when I graduated with my diploma of journalism, people were like, so what What are you? And I was like, well, I'm a journalist because it mm. says I'm a journalist on my qualifications. yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, the problem with journalism is that any muppet can call themselves a journalist. True, there's not like um, a test you have to take, you know, like you don't have to pass the bar to be a journalist. No, no, you don't. (laughs) But, you know, in saying that, though, the the journalists that I respect are the people that have studied. And, like, somebody asked me once, what's a professional? You know what a professional is? Someone who gets paid. A professional (laughs) is somebody who, first of all, produces work to a professional standard Mm. second of all has invested in their skill craft or trade 
third of all, has the respect of other people in the in that industry. Mm. And if you don't have one or three of those, and I, I'd like to think I have all three of them, mm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with calling you a journalist if you, you know, write blogs about your weekend out. I mean, but you're not a professional. Yeah. Well, you know, I always thought it was money. It was like you got to get paid for it, but um, that's definitely part of it. But you know, um, if you're producing work at a professional level, then you will right. get paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the money aspect of it comes. It's like the opposite of a catch twenty two. Yeah. It's like a catch 44, like the good thing happens, so then the other good thing happens, and then it goes back to the good thing, you know. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there's been some amazing self-trained journalists that have, you know, Mm. just gone out there and done it. And they're, they're, you know, highly accomplished people, but... um, and there's a lot of them out there doing it who probably shouldn't be. (laughs) Yeah, but for every every self-made, every self-taught journalist... There's probably a thousand graduates. Yeah, I mean, journalism is really, it's a model. So you can't have had any criticism from the Cairo Chronicle since you started, have you? Yeah, I get criticism, yeah, yeah. but not a lot. I get far more support. Like what? Oh, you know, it's exploitation of the homeless community. Um, They don't want to see that? (laughs) Yeah, you know, why are you telling people all this stuff, you know? Even people saying, you know, don't put the list of community meals in because, you know... Oh, uh, people go there. Yeah, and it's like, well, you know, it's like... Mm-hmm. Do you want me to advertise it or not? <laughs> yeah, you know, and then, like, you know, sometimes um, when I'm taking photos of people on the street, and I always ask people before I take their photo if I can take their photo... But, um, you know, you'll get somebody else street and go, oh, what the fuck are you doing? Mm. What right do you have to tell our stories? Because it's been a long time since I lived on the street, and I lived on the street for a long time. Mm. But, you know, a lot of the new streeties, they don't, they don't know that I've been in their footsteps. Yeah. I've, I've walked yep. their path. Mm. Um, and been, been there, done that kind of before there. there. Yeah, yeah, they just see me as somebody out there on the street. Yeah. Take, you know... Someone with a home. Yeah, yeah, so... But, you know, fortunately... So you pretty fucking shitty feeling not having a, a house, let alone a home. Yeah, and, you know, when people share their stories with me, that's a huge responsibility. Yeah. That's a massive honour. Mm. And I take that really seriously, because if I fuck it up, if I misrepresent somebody... And I get their story wrong or sensationalize it or, you know, publish it out of context, mm. I'm done. Nobody on the road will trust me. Yeah. You know, as a journalist, you have to build trust within your round, within your field that you write in. Mm. And if, whether that's politics or sports or, you know, niche industries, you have to build that trust. You have to pay your dues. And, man, I've paid my dues and quids. Yeah. And you build that trust by giving an honest representation. Yeah. And, you know, more and more now, people will come to me and go, can I share my story? And that's... um, Great. Where else do you read stories about drug abuse, homeless people, um, prostitutes, drug dealers? Usually you read it in fiction. Yeah, so... This is non-fiction. This is real. And you're not... Yeah, we're not reading about it. I mean, newspapers generally contain negative shit. Oh, bad, bad news is a fundamental journalism value. Right. See, my, my style... Nobody of, wants to read good news. No, if it bleeds, it leads. That's a saying in journalism. Yeah. Um, but you're following that to an extent? or No. No, no I mean... I guess my style of journalism is almost a Māori style of journalism, even though I make no claims to have Māori blood. But Māori journalism is more about people and their stories rather than, right. about, rather than issues and events. Right. It's more personal rather than political or 
I mean, right. by being personal, you're also making it social because yeah. there's multiple people. Yeah. In this. And, you know, as journalists, we have to, we have an obligation to represent all sectors of the community, not just the, um, you know, yeah, the yeah, moral right. majority. Yeah. Usually, if you pick up a newspaper or a magazine, if there's an interview of someone, that person is going to be rich. Yeah. And every week, there's some bullshit opinion piece by some wanker I don't know and don't care about writing about shit I'm not interested in and could care less about. Yeah, it's weird. The thing is, I don't want to sound morbid, but, you know, you've heard that, like, TV shows about um, dark things, you know, serial killers or whatever, and podcasts and shit is really um, getting popular now. And maybe that is people are sick of hearing... um, all these Hollywood stories with the happy ending and such, people actually want to hear more reality, not just from the rich people, <laughs> you know, I think point of view. I think human beings are inherently very voyeuristic. And if we can see people in the media and read stories about people and see programs about things that we can relate to, mm. that we, we can right. see ourselves in, yeah, we can, we can, or we can empathise with how that might have happened. Yeah, you can connect to that. Character. You can connect that, and it's you know, stories are invaluable for allowing us to build understanding and empathy with people and cultures and situations mm. that we may not ever encounter. Yeah, and that makes them much more interesting too. You know, if the average person has the story of say. Yeah, I went to school, went to uni, I got married, I started my job, and then I retired and died. You're not going to hear that same story from someone on the street. No, I mean... Everybody's got a different story. I believe that everybody has their own story, and everybody has a story to share. You know, one thing I've learned in my 52 years on this planet is that everybody at some stage in their life, will experience trauma. Right. And from trauma comes great stories. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And hopefully growth. I feel like to change as a person, to really change, you need to go through some kind of hardship or something to be like, damn, I got through that. I'm not not the same now, (laughs) but um, it'll do. I I know when my ex and I broke up, it took me years to get over that. Mm. I just feel like such an asshole. I felt like I'd let my family down. I felt like I'd let my partner down. Mm. I felt like I'd let my child down. And I punished myself. I punished myself severely. And But I got to the stage, you know, I had nothing. I was on the street. And it's like, when do I forgive myself? Mm, true. You would forgive someone else who yeah. did that. And you know what? I mean, I'm not a religious person, but, you know, what does it say in the Bible? Forgive me of my trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against you. As I forgive those who trespass upon me. And to me, that means, how can I expect to be forgiven for my fuck-ups? Because we all fuck up. We all make mistakes. If I can't forgive other people. Or you can't forgive yourself. Or I can't forgive myself. Yeah. I watched this cool documentary the other day about this uh, therapist who's working with Jonah Hill and he said about if anybody that you have kind of a grievance against the trick is to concentrate in your body the feeling of love and then to shoot it out as a laser beam of that person and fill it like 100% of your love into that person that you don't like and what happens in the end is that person turns into like a sun of light and then you realize you're surrounded by it anyway I'll tell you the story about the reverse of that. And this is part of the reason why I'm called Six. Well, I, um, I had a falling out with um, the management at Merge Cafe. And long story short, they fired me. Oh, you worked there. What did you do? I was just volunteering in the kitchen and helping out. That sucks when you get fired when you're a volunteer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it does. It really does suck. Anyway... I was so angry and so hostile about it. That night I sat outside LifeWise 
and I just focused all my anger and hatred at them. Wow. Like solidly for about 12 hours. And you know what? The next day, the ma- senior management mm. got made redundant. Wow. And the um, other manager, son, tried to commit suicide. Oh, God. So don't be, don't be. But don't what I was saying about the son thing is it's supposed to come back to you. So in your scenario, if it was exact opposite metaphor, it would also come back and you would be punished too somehow uh, well, for I sending thought, out yeah. that negative energy. Well, I suppose I was, but I can't remember it. And that is the thing too. You were already being. If you, uh, if you do like, like, but when you do tap into these energies, if you do wish ill will against somebody, you will have to pay for that. Yeah. In like some way or another. Karma is a bitch. Mm. Yeah. I think, and yeah, not in a way that we understand the word karma to mean, but I, I do think that you can't well, really karma feel is, good in yourself if you're doing bad to others. No. And that and will, that manif- will, that will manifest somehow. That will haunt you. You were ghost hunting the other night. You yeah. believe in hauntings? Yeah. Cigarette break. Cigarette break. Do a little do a little plug for what's something. All right. A little plug. White Lady, um, St. Kim's Arcade, K Road. They've been an amazing support to me. And, you know, they have milkshakes from $6, toasted sandwiches, the best burgers you will ever eat. Check them out anytime. Support them. They support me. Thank you. The white lady. So we just took a cigarette break and we're on K Road. Yeah, sorry if my breath smells a bit. <laughs> and we we're talking to a friend and uh, we said, oh, we're doing this podcast. What's something we should talk about on the podcast? What do you think? We we're just like, you know, brainstorming a few ideas. And he said, you should tell all the rich people, all the people with money to Koha, to give Koha. And we were like, yeah, that's good. Yeah. And what is the, the definition of koha is different to donation, to make donation. Koha is an, a, a gift of appreciation. So there can be time, there can be resources, there can be food, there can be cash, obviously. But, you know, we need to create a more philanthropic um, society because... I think the the people who have the resources and have the assets have a moral obligation mm. to share that with their wider community. And, you know, we were talking before about um, getting people into housing and the people we've failed to get into housing. And, you know, those failures we can turn around with a bit of love and kindness. Mm. Um, I saw just while we were out having a break, I saw one of the old street queens, you know, angry. And I was thinking, you know, Mm. that's really hostile behavior. But, you know, this is a person who's, you know, had a shit life. Suffered hardship. Suffered hardship. And, you know, yeah, they're angry. Of course mm. you're angry. Right. You know, it's generations of, of trauma. It's generations of, you know, dysfunction. It's, mm. it's, you know, it's the Pakia imposing their beliefs yeah. and ways on, on people with a completely different mm. cultural mindset. Totally. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't, you know. A little a bit, bit of, of koha. A little bit of koha and mm. understanding... Mm. Goes a hell of a long way. Yeah. Um, and you were talking about the free free market, really, oh, yeah, really, yeah. really, my, really free. Yeah, my fr- my flatmate. Um, they run it. I guess maybe it's an international thing, but it's called the really, really free market, and uh, it's once a month. And I know they've been running it. And of course, I said, "Is it really free at this market?" And they said, "Yeah." That's why it's called really, really free. Because everybody, first question always, is it really free? And um, it's really, really free. nz. And once a month, they'll do it somewhere in Auckland. And you'll be surprised. I went there the other day. And there's really good shit there. People are bringing stuff. Being like, look, this is right, someone's definitely going to take this. Like records. Um, really nice uh, kitchenware. Lots of toys. Um, 
and abstract kind of things that you'd find at an op shop like my flatmate my other flatmate got a um ginger beer brewing kit oh nice <laughs> yeah oh, i got an old radio from the 1960s that oh, worked wow. yeah it worked really well nice it only gets am but i'm, I'm listening to maori fm i think it's like 660 am there's, oh, good, there's some good stuff on the AM channel, some community stations. And but yeah, check out the really, really free markets in Auckland. Yeah, so we'll try and organise one for around K Road. Yeah, the thing is that they just need space, so mm. every time it's a different location, so, you know, maybe, it's like I just saw there's like three empty buildings yeah, next well, door here. You know, Tiara, one of those. Tiara, who we were just talking to, said perhaps the church and... They're always willing to support, so they're big fans of mine, which is ironic. What, the church on the corner there? Methodist church, yeah. So the, It's like K Road and Queen yeah. Street intersection, yeah. Pitt Street. Oh, no, not the Baptist tab- Tabernacle, the Methodist church on Pitt Street. Oh, that one, yeah, yeah. They have yeah. a lot of gigs there. That's yeah, cool. Do, I saw yeah. Princess Chelsea there um, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, no, they've got some good stuff happening there, and they're, they're really supportive. Mm. Once again, they're supportive of the Chronicle which is kind of ironic because I don't believe in God. Yeah. Hopefully God doesn't subscribe to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for lightning. <laughs> what yeah. are your hopes for the um, Cabro Chronicle future? I don't really have hopes. I think hope is a um, defeatist emotion. I have plans. Okay. So the plan is to increase production this year so that we're producing more Chronicles more often. Um, get more contributors on board I think the format's probably about right now we've got um, you've got a format you're saying first thing is content mm. second is audience well this no? is this is like these are like I was saying how do I measure my success how do I know that I'm gaining traction and mm. I thought the only thing I can focus on is producing content so that's my KPI yep. my key performance indicator is to produce content if you are producing content you're doing content well. yeah content leads to an audience an audience builds influence and influence brings opportunities and opportunities deliver income mm. so that's the model. That's the plan. Um, like there is a very detailed. In the end, if you can't achieve an income, you can't continue producing your content because you have to do something else. Well, I really only want to do the chronicle for probably another two or three years, and then hand it over to a protege who can. Who would, who would you give it to? Who would this protege be in your mind? Uh, in, in my mind. There's somebody similar to myself, you know, yeah. shared values, somebody... Somebody who's experienced K-Road extensively as well? Well, not necessarily, but perhaps somebody that's, you know, been through hardships and, and you know, overcome them and wants to make a difference more than an income. Right. I think the population of K-Road is predominantly fringe citizens, like whether that's homeless or artists or sex workers, or people in the hospitality industry. It's people generally on the fringe who aren't well represented in mainstream media. Um, People Mm. who have stories to share, have stories to tell. And a lot of the stories we get doing now are stories about overcoming those hardships. And Yeah, so there is hope. I believe, like, hope is good for you. You can't be a pessimist. You have to have a bit of hope. Yeah. Yeah, you do. But, you know, I just I just think the word hope is kind of a defeatist. Right, because it's Cause passive you, in a way. You're giving up control. You're saying, yeah, well, I yeah, hope yeah, this happens. Yeah, true that, yeah. I hope this happens. But I hope it, God has planned this for me. Yeah, I hope the sun comes up tomorrow. If it doesn't, I'll be miffed. Yeah, it's cool to podcast with you yeah. again. Um, Look, it, I'm going to... Well, I'm going to post this on my um, K Road Chronicle YouTube channel. So, mm. if you want to put down in the comments section below um, what you, who you'd like me to interview, what you'd like me to talk about, any comments, any questions, feel free to you know subscribe. Um, what's the other thing? Tap the bell. 
Um, share with your mates. Sound the air horn. Sound the air horn. And yeah, um, it would be cool to see you interviewing people around K Road. Like podcast formats, pretty popular these days. Yeah, I made a commitment to do more video and more podcasts. So expect something each week. That's um, my KPI, key performance indicator. I'll make Tuesday my target day. And um, do you have a minimum time? No, just w- our podcast. Could just be, a podcast. Could be two could, minutes. Could, could be, be two minutes. Could be hour, two hours. Could be, all right. So, thanks everybody for your support. Support me on Patreon. Look, check out the Instagram. Share the love, and um, as long as you support what I'm doing, I'll keep doing it. Merry Christmas. We'll talk to you before the new year because next Tuesday is Boxing Day, I believe. No, day after Boxing Day. So, um, Kia Kaha, New Zealand. We'll get through this shit. <laughs>